Let's let's start uh, and look at uh, the the uh, the demo for the DTI. Then uh, go back to your FatCat demo directory and do TCSH do zero nine viz DTI summa visual x three. So tab as you go to make it easier on you. <laughs> Okay, so it tells us to position the windows on the screen, and let's move those around as we want. And we can tell there's something going on because we see color coming out through the behind the brain there. So, so there's something interesting happening. So let's let's once you've put everything in the places you like, hit uh, enter. Uh, I hit OK on the uh, the dialog pop up there. Yeah, so we're in the Fat Cat demo, and we're doing uh, um, do zero nine. We're doing the last one, exercise three from do zero nine. It's okay. Is this a subject uh, native? Yes. Yes, it's a subject native space, and it's got. We have a white. The white matter surfaces that have been moved into that that native space. This will give us a tutorial as we as we do it. Is it will give us instructions. Say do this and then do that. So we'll we'll follow its instructions. So here it says to where is this will be about Instatract and Instacore in a single subject. It's going to create a masking sphere and only tracks going through it are displayed. It says right click a point on the tracts and open the controller and then click on masks twice. OK, so I clicked on, a ma on, on the tract. And now I'm going to double click on the masks. So I have the mask controller set up here. So we just go through and follow the instructions. And uh, creates a masking sphere. And only tracks going through it are so displayed to move the sphere right double click on it then select any location on the tracts so let's do that so right double click when you see the, the mesh of it that's when it's activated it's in editing mode and then we can have it uh, talk to to uh, AFNI by hitting the T key So we can see that AFNI has the surfaces, and it also has this, this uh, circle on the slices. So that's the same as our, our sphere uh, for the masks. Let's continue on with this. And uh, you can bring those, uh, the surfaces back in the SUMA menu by, right, by using the left and right brackets. Okay, so this has already got Instacore set, so uh, we should be able to set a. Um, uh, we should be able to run Instacore as it is. So um, well, we probably have to reduce the threshold. Oh, it hasn't been set up. Okay, so let's set it up here. Yeah, so the first one, just use the error time series. And um, pick a seed radius blur of 4 millimeters. So you're just following the instruction. The seed radius to 6 millimeters. Okay, so this is what the instructions say to, to put into the Instacore, so we'll do that and do set up and keep. And now as we, 
we move, we change, use Instacore in AFNI, it will send that to SUMA. So we're able to see that correlation, both the volume and on the surface at the same time. And we're moving at the same time. We're, we're also seeing the tracks that go through that. So let's give a little extra room for this. And uh, so here we can change our seed points, control shift drag, and we're moving correlation and the mask at the same time. So there's a lot of things going on at the same time, a lot of communication back and forth. Coloring in SUMA is coming from AFNI for that, by, for that correlation. So we're seeing correlation, we're seeing the fibers that connect uh, through that, that point too. So it's a, it's a pretty amazing uh, interface for all this. Um, so that's, uh, I think, a pretty interesting part of AFNI SUMA's interaction. Yeah, and you can also select somewhere on the surface here. You can click over on the surface and you'll see you'll get this, this dotted shape. I don't know if you can make that out here. If you get the, do the dotted shape is the doppelganger reflection of, the, uh, of the, the mask. So we're seeing the mask, but because it's been pried apart, we can move along the, the surface too. So here we're seeing instant correlation and tracking at the same time. Uh, we're looking at, we have uh, AFNI open. It's doing a coral instacore there, sending the correlation and the, the, the uh, track uh, mask uh, seed location. And we can do that either way, either controlling the location in AFNI or in, in SUMA. Any questions about that? Let me continue on in that. I'm not sure if there's anything that... I'm going to close that and continue on to some other demos. Okay, so um, here's something that we can do. Uh, if, if you've saved clusters with a clusterize plugin or, or, or cluster, 3D clusterize command or 3D clust, something like that, you can make surfaces out of that and see them in SUMA. And so I have done that. You can, I, you should have, I think you have this in your handouts, right? The uh, advanced vis, vis notes. Yeah, I think that's there. I think I may have done this already, so uh, close that. And uh, okay, so let me see if I have some of those gifty files. I do. Okay, so ISO Surface will produce a set of gifty files, all starting with cluster test here, uh, based on the clusters from that I've saved out of my clusterized program or or my clusterized plugin. And now I'm going to call SUMA to, to look at these. And uh, this, the uh, format of this is, so we're calling SUMA, we're going to call it with one state. We're not using a spec file here. We're using just the names of the data sets. So a series of gifty data sets. So we've got a one gifty data set for every cluster. And we're going to show it together with some volume. I'll use the skull stripped volume here and, and an anatomical reference volume. 
volume so that if I talk if I do want to talk to AFNI it will know what uh, what coordinates to use so let's just do do that quickly so I'm going to copy and paste that command into my terminal okay so here are the same kinds of clusters we've been looking at during the week uh, for a, a visual stimulus and uh, for that, that experiment we've been seeing. And uh, this is what it looks like in three dimensions. And it's another way to visualize your data. So here, this I, I find it really useful to be able to see the whole extent. When you see it in a 2D slice, you don't really get a great feel for how far it goes and the shape of it. So this is, uh, I, f I find this very useful. Um, we can click on the volume and control that. So if I want to see this within the context of the, uh, of the whole head, I can change the, put the rendered volume on. Oops, I've double clicked that by accident. So now it's poking through. Um, I can change the transparency. This render the, the I created the surfaces with, with ISO surface that one line there, so all I did was call ISO surface and tell it to give each one a different color and a different make a different surface for each one of those. We've done the same kind of thing for ECOG, ECOG data where each each CT cluster is a separate electrode, and there we put it all into one data set with a slightly different options. To, to merge the ROIs and to make one data set of a lot of surfaces together. And so that's another handy way to look at data. So if you have it in the volume, you can look at it in SUMA in some way, either as a new surface or as a volume, or both at the same time. So if you have a parcellation, you can make a surface. That's right. So I'm going to do that. We can do that together for an atlas in a second. And, and I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. It can be any parcellation, any segmentation. This is a segmentation itself, really. Uh, the clusters of different numbers for each region. So this, the ISO surface will look through, see what has the same number, and make a surface out of that. It's going to do a mask of the whole brain. We can just apply the ISO surface, and then it's going to render the version. It will, yes. And is there a way to differentiate soul code? It's it's not it's not the level of uh, a free surfer at doing this. It does a rendering of it. This is a um, it's it's uh, maybe a bit better than our, our render plugin, but it's uh, it's not smoothing out the data. We do it. There's a smooth option, but it's not doing this in a, a very rigorous way. But that said, if your data is very well segmented, it do, it does a pretty good job. Uh, each of these. Well, maybe I'll show on the atlas a little bit better. Um, yeah, all of these these things are individually controllable. So that when I say that, I mean that I can click on any region, and the object controller opens up, and then I can uh, well, I can change the parameters. So if I do Control P, Control P, not just P, uh, I can change that. And if you look closely. This peach colored region becomes, well, there's actually two different things going on in here. So there's two regions actually that are similar colors. So sometimes the colors come out a little bit close to each other. So I can look through them, change to the other one. So we have two kind of overlapping clusters. which I hadn't noticed it before, but there, there are two of them. So, and uh, we can change opacity of one with control O. So we have control O and control P to control the opacity and, trans and um, points mode of, uh, of each of the surfaces. Okay. So I find this a very useful tool for, for looking at 
if you've got activation, how does it form? What's the shape of it throughout the brain? Does it make some kind of sense? And I think it's also good for demonstration of what you're looking at. If you found something interesting, show it within the context of the brain. It's, it's, it's a reasonable way to look at your data. All right, I'm going to close that. And I'm going to continue on. Um, this, uh, in this example, you can follow the same. Uh, you can make a new directory of atlas surfaces, then make an atlas like, like that. So, um, yeah, so that's, uh, let's see where I've got mine. Um, TT to Psi in, I think, an atlas surface directory. What's that? Follow oh. on. You you can you can do it. It it doesn't. It takes a little bit of time, and it's it's. Uh, but it's it's not too outrageous. But. No, you're going to do this from an atlas that's in your A bin directory. Oh. Yeah. So I've already done that, but uh, you can. I'll show you um, what that looks like. So here I have a directory. It's TT to Psi. It's got the left and right uh, regions. All uh, these came out of Free Surfer, so these are Free Surfer's uh, segmentation for uh, over the 75 subjects. <coughs> and uh, you can uh, run it in the same way that we looked at the clusters. So I'm going to do that here. I'll copy it here. Summa dash one state one state dash i star dot G, gii for all the gifty files in that directory and dash vol to load the uh, the uh, volume of the ttn27 data set okay i've done a remeshing which has a kind of funny effect we have a, a unicorn uh, horn to it but other than that it's uh, pretty decent. Three meshing made as a mistake in it. So uh, here we can click on a, on, uh, a surface, and we have uh, the label of the surface up here. And as before, you can change the opacity of that particular region and uh, change the points mode. So you can see it as a mesh, or as points. If you look closely, you see there just it's a speckle of points in there, and uh, or hide it completely. And then once it's hidden completely, you can click, click down to the next level, down below that, and and repeat the process. Oops. With um, that region below it. And so I, I find it's useful for figuring out what regions are next to e e each other and what's under each other. And so um, that's uh, another way to look at an atlas, look at your data. And you also have uh, things like these. This uh, the TTN27 is in there too, and uh, that could be rendered too. So that just ends up peeking through like that. So this is you know, with with all that in there. The N twenty seven doesn't make too much sense to show, but uh, uh, if you have just one or two regions, then showing it in the context is really useful. And where, where can we find the notes? That's in the uh, handouts. The advanced viz notes should be there. You get a first base. You give it uh, um, the 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 parcellated data set, which is uh, either which is typically an atlas in AFNI, and it will read the header of that and uh, make separate surfaces or one giant surface that com is composed of the separate regions. So if you have your inflated ROIs, then you can follow. The inflated ROIs. Yeah, I think that will work. 
Yeah, I think so. I don't see why it wouldn't, actually. So that's, yeah, it should work. Uh, if it has a label, it will use it. If it doesn't have a label, it'll just assign a number. So in either case, you get the, the set of structures out of it. Yeah, so we're seeing the TTN27 data set with it. Um, but you don't actually have to include a volume with it. I just did that just to show that it could be done together. That's right, right. I can, um, I can also do this. So the, the structures that I've selected would show up uh, separately. Oh, so I have all that. That's what was showing up here. We have a uh, white matter surface, the white matter region in there. So, um, yeah, so you can mix whether you're customizing on one region or all the regions. And if you want to change everything back to points mode, you can do shift P and everything is, is back, and shift O changes to the default opacity for the whole, whole, whole uh, surface. You can turn off the convexity that gives it these dark spots with the letter B. Control P, yes, that's, that's what that's for. But shift P turns on and off everything. It reverts back to, uh, to, to all of it together. These, of course, can continue to talk to AFNI. You could have AFNI open at the same time with this. I wanted to show this is a new part of AFNI. We have um, new ways to measure thickness. Okay, so measuring thickness. So um, uh, FreeSurfer provides a very commonly used way to measure thickness, and that is available for everyone. Uh, but sometimes it's not useful for people that uh, are doing studies that aren't the run of the mill. That uh, so if they're doing things with macaques or marmosets or or uh, children, infants, toddlers, or uh, lesion studies that have lesions in it, Free Surfer doesn't do a terribly good job of tracking the thickness. So I was interested in making a new th set of thickness tools and talking with Rick and Paul. This is the kind of topic that gets us really excited because we've been doing image processing for years and we can come up with, each of us came up with different ways to do it and they all work. So, so I'll go through a couple of these, these ways. This, this is, so these are some examples. Um, uh, we, we, try, we wanted to make sure we were right, so uh, we tried it on some models of, of objects, some volumes that we created, either these kind of wafers or cylinders or uh, spheres or things like that, and then applied it to other data sets. So here, these are macaque images. And this is a view in SUMA. SUMA has the ability to clip through, through surfaces and show you the interior uh, of this. This is a map. The thickness has been mapped from the volume. All the, all the methods are basically volumetric methods to calculate thickness. So we're calculating thickness uh, in the volume and then projecting it out to the surface. And then we can bring it back into the volume afterwards too because there's some advantages to doing that but let's let's start with this so you'll see that we measure things like here comes out very thick we can even measure ventricles doesn't really matter it just it's just a mask for for the data we're just the basic input is a mask data set so that requires the segmentation of that mask be good because that's all we're going on we don't do the segmentation really. We have there are some some tools, but uh, mostly we're going to get the segmentation from something else. And so uh, we did want to compare it with to make sure that we're somewhere in the ballpark. We did compare it with FreeSurfer, and uh, FreeSurfer morning evening evening session data. And so we compared it. Uh, this is for for a particular subject in the top row. And these are our three methods. One is called in out. The other is erosion, and then we have the ball and box method, and this, this is Free Surfer's version of it. See that they're all very similar. The in out method works by this one does require three input masks, basically. You need an inside 
and an outside, and it measures how far every voxel is to the inside and outside masks. So you have, you know, inside a mask, it will show you how, how much distance it is to the inside and how much distance to the outside. If you add the two together, you have something that's like thickness, the in-out measure. Another way to measure thickness is to look at the erosion of a data set. So how many times you remove voxels on the, on the outside of a, of a cluster of voxels before it disappears. And you can measure how long that's, that's there uh, and then project so you get a kind of depth measurement and then project the maximum depth out in, onto a surface and onto back volume too. So that's what the erosion method is. We also have the ball and box method. So the ball and box method, you take a sphere and you put it down in your volume and see what's the largest sphere that you can fit at any place. And then you'll also do that with a box just to make sure you get the corners, kind of like you're playing Tetris and you want to get the corners of the, uh, the box. So we'll put uh, cubes down. So I'll call that the ball and box method. And uh, all the methods seem to work out OK. Uh, they, they're very similar to Free Surfer. Uh, and this is a graph uh, across, uh, I forget how many subjects. I think it was 35 subjects or so uh, versus uh, uh, Free Surfer's uh, data. Um, uh, this is actually, I think, maybe on just, this is on just one subject. Uh, but we did this repeatedly for multiple subjects. And they were very similar. So. The in out versus uh, free surfer. Um, free surfer stop their their peak. Their maximum thickness is five millimeters. That's hard coded, so they won't they won't let anything go below that. The and uh, so mostly it's very similar. This is free surfer morning versus evening. Free surfer will will give you different numbers on a repeated test, and they will even give you different numbers on a repeated test if you've zero padded your volume. So you give it the same volume and you add, oops, at a slice of, of uh, zeros on the end, you will get a different set of thicknesses. And that will vary in roughly the same kind of uh, uh, differences here. So, so that, that's uh, another thing to, to think about is that free surfer is, is going to give you numbers too. And and each of these gives you a slightly different interpretation of what thickness means. Now, like I said, this has been use, useful for uh, macaques, marmosets, and uh, we're applying it now for uh, toddler studies, too. So, so red means very thick. Red is thick, yes. This is the, I think the images are scaled from 1 to 5, or to 0 to 5. Yeah, so they're very similar kinds of numbers. Uh, uh, the free surfer and the in-out method ha are probably the most similar, although they don't, it looks here like the erosion method is most similar to free surfer, but there's a difference in that um, if you're looking at, at uh, of some sort, it could be either a very small thing or a very big thing, depending on how it, it ends up on the surface. So do you want a protuberance off a surface to be a small thing or a big thing? Are you measuring that as part of your thickness? So, uh, so there's a slightly different interpretation. Uh, but overall, it's, it's kind of, they all give kind of similar measurements. And these things are, these tools are very fast. It's doing things in the volume and, and they work uh, just mostly just in seconds minutes. Macaque Atlas with the connections. So many of you are interested in macaques. Anyway, I, I have a terminal open for it, so um, if anyone is interested, I can provide that to you. Okay, so macaque connections. Um, let me close the SUMA. Um, I don't think that you do. I don't think you, you do. But if you, if you send me a note, I will. Uh, it is available on, on our web server. 
the Macaque connections. I can I can send a link out for that. Okay, so I'll just start Suma here. Uh, we're showing the D99 Atlas and the uh, the connections that Salim has uh, has uh, uh, given us here. So he's given us a set of connections. Um, we can look at these connections in lots of different ways. They're all labeled with the regions that these are from uh, different tracer studies, uh, many of which he did. So um, he knows something about them, and uh, some of them are from other people. So uh, we can click on any particular region. It shows what region is connected to that, and click on another region to see what that is con what's connected to that from the tracer studies. Red and yellow mean the, trace. the edge coloration. So the edge coloration is the intensity of the the intensity of the connection. So was there a strong connection, a moderate connection, a weak connection? Uh, in how many cells showed up in the uh, tracer study? Red. And uh, red is the most. We can sh you can bring up the uh, color scale, the uh, Suma controller for that. And this is just following this, but uh, generally I like to use a striped color scale that would get one intensity for a different thing. But I, I can, we can also threshold on this. So when I pass one, the weak connections are gone. And if I pass two, the moderate connections are gone, and I see only the strong connections. So only the strong survive here. So. <laughs> This doesn't have directionality in it. We can also see this uh, in, um, in uh, if I open up another controller with a control N, I can take this, so I've got two copies now, but if I change the view of it, I can see it as a matrix mode instead. And so rather than traverse this, um, Geometrically, I can do this through the graph. If I just click, yeah. See, I can even turn it. So. You can take another matrix, let's say from Coco Mac, and I want to draw it as exactly as it is. Is it easy to open? It's 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 relatively simple. I'm sure you can do it. It's yeah, I mean, it's, it's a list of edges, it's a list of labels, uh, and edge strength. So you say this, this, this uh, edge, this, this uh, region, is this index is connected to this index with this strength. And you can even have, each index can have a, uh, a group number. So we could color all the, the ones in one part of a brain one color, and all the one parts in another another color. And, uh, if I want to, I can show all of them again with the double click, double right click there. So you can see that AFNI and SUMA, they can take in a lot of different kinds of data. SUMA can now show multiple kinds if you have connections in different ways, tractography or, or, uh, or uh, uh, connection graphs like this, you can bring those in, show them in anatomical or as a graph. I'm not, I have not used a spec file for these. <laughs> These are, are basically text files of numbers and, and labels. So, um, it, um, yeah, yeah, actually. So, um, all right. So here's here's one that uh, well, I made it with uh, collaborations here. So, okay. So this is another way of showing a graph. Um, so I've got my data here. Okay, so here is a, a list of connections. Connection zero is connected to edge connection one. So these regions are connected. This one doesn't have a strength in it. It's just there could be a third column with a strength. And so this is the list of edges. Uh, you can also have I think the 
this is it. Okay, so here are the nodes in my connection table. Okay, this connection SSC core, one was Ziad Saad, so on. And then there's the connection uh, uh, group at the end. Okay. Um, so I should have something. Let's look at collaborations here. Okay, so given that that collaboration thing, uh, the, the we can look at the same data in a different way. After I've taken those those data sets as input and I bring it into, I convert it to connections dot d set contributor connections dot d set. So let's do that and. Um, Oh, I've, uh, okay, so let me set F data dir. Well, you know what? I, I can just show this as just with the uh, the data set itself. And uh, Okay, so Suma, we need uh, just that. Okay, here is a way to show your collaborations. So you can, and all it's just another kind of data. It doesn't, you know, it's got a label, it's got nodes. And here I can manipulate this in the same way I did the others. So let's, let's do that. I'm going to change the uh, the connections here, so uh, I can change the size of the spheres. I can uh, change the size of the lines. I I didn't assign the strength of the connections, how much they contributed to this, because nobody who wants to offend anybody, so uh, it's already hard enough. So uh, and. Yeah, you could do it by, you can rate something like that if you want to be in trouble with everyone. But yes, you can do that. <laughs> uh, so here, this works just as it does. You, know, you could set fonts and stuff like that. Uh, if I turn on momentum, I can do that. And that's a fine uh, close for a, for a, a talk, right? So. <laughs> All right. Are there any questions about uh, about how to visualize stuff in, inside Daphne? Uh, we can normally then uh, add something as the strength, for example, the So that's just the third column on the edge list. So you show that this is connected to this, and then how strong is that? Uh, there's an edge. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah. So it will take that. The, the edge is mapped from the color bar uh, or to the color bar. Uh, so here it's in red because they're all equal. But on the. The edge probably makes itself, or is that there's nothing proven? That's part of the graph, right? So when it converts those, it says that this is connected to this and this is connected to this. Those, it puts in a default edge, a default strength of one. Is it a grid file? It's, yes, it's basically a grid file, yes. It's not the grid file, it's the GD set uh, file. But bringing it into AFNI, it's, it's pretty much the same thing. It's a SUMA, the dash GD set. Do you have uh, functions to measure connectivity strength, like I get back to the or something like this? I can.
Yeah, yes. Yeah, as long as you have a sort of a matrix. See, I wanted to show one, one or two other little things. And, uh, and so over here, I made a movie of some of the, uh, of the EPI data as we were looking at it before, but now mapped onto the surface. So, oh, yeah. so here's the same data that we've been seeing throughout the week, but now the time is, it, it, over time it's mapping this to the surface. So I used 3D, uh, I used the VaultaSurf plugin to actually do this. Um, so it's, you can see some things that are very unusual. You see the visual cortex is all kind of together on and off. And then it, every once in a while you see it all turns red. And uh, that when it turns red, that's either the pre-steady state or the motion. And it, it all goes out of scale. So uh, this is all mapping into these are uh, uh, the uh, well. I can't turn it around because it's it's just a movie. It's not Suma. So uh, <laughs> uh, so it's uh, mapping into the volume by a few millimeters. So I thought that was another interesting way to look at this data. So with your this is these are clusters. So you can look, do that with the clusters over time to see how activation happens. You know, see it in, in back in the original time. Now this one did a little trick, and I, I demeaned it to be able to bring up the color scales in the in the proper way. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So there's another thing that I wanted to show. So David Jangrau was uh, working on a project here, and he contributed uh, this script. And we'll give you this. So um, I think I. May already have it open. Um, where? Okay, well, I'll just put it here. So David Jengra's Peter Banditini's group, he made a, a script that makes montages of SUMA, SUMA views. So you can get different views, left, right, up, down, and it will save this for you. Now he was working on this as and and uh, as part of another project, which was pretty interesting to me. That uh, and this one made it to the news, so we were pretty happy about that. But Paul Taylor and I worked on this. So let's see if I have one of these. Yeah, here it is. I should probably turn the volume on. So you see what's in the background here. So this was music in the brain at the Kennedy Center, and we got to see Suma with our rendering there hanging over the orchestra and over Renee Fleming as she was singing the song, because this was scanned in the scanner at, at uh, NIH, and so uh, that's uh, and David Jengra's explaining to her what, what they're doing there. So uh, what's that? <laughs> I'm sorry, it's hard to hear you. <laughs> yes, mo there are a lot of issues. Uh, respiration, motion. Uh, they had her do different kinds of things in the scanner. Uh, that's, uh, yeah. So we, there we use the same kinds of uh, things that we've been talking about today and, and how to utilize uh, activation as you go. So, so again, you know, remove this. In this case, we just uh, David removed the, everything that was outside uh, some standard deviation over a baseline. So, uh, yeah. So I close with that. Uh, if you have any more questions, just feel free to ask. We'll stay around for a while until you, until we finished answering your questions. All right. All right. Thank you for all your attention. Thank you, Federico, for your help. Thanks, Chris, too. Thanks. <laughs>